Hello, this is Reza Rad from Radacat. In this video, I want to talk about one of the performance tips that you can apply in a Power BI solution, which is related to direct query. I'm going to talk about why direct query is slow, uh, what are problems with it, and what are the alternatives that you have to use. Let's jump into this video. Power BI performance can be impacted by many things such as DAX measures, such as the uh, both directional relationships that you might have in your model and many other factors. One of those factors is the type of connection you use from the Power BI um, to the data sources. There are different types of connections. You can import data into Power BI, you can have a direct query connection, you can have a live connection, and I have explained in other videos what are these types of connections. Now, in this video particularly, I want to talk about direct query. And I want to show you how that performs compared to a method such as import. And what are the misconceptions and myths that people think that is the reason to use direct query, which can be really resolved really simply. Uh, so what I do is I'll go into my demo file here. Here I have a Power BI solution that I'm going to get data from a SQL Server data source. Now this is an Azure SQL Server data source and I have uh, a table with 400,000 records in it. It's not a huge table. Um, if we are talking about big tables, these can be like easily over uh, tens of millions of records. This is not like that. This is not even half a million of record, but I'll use this table to show you that as an example how this works. So I'll go and select this table and I say load. I'm not doing any transformations here. Uh, just bringing that, I'll use direct query here to show you how this performs compared to what we use later, which is import. Uh, and when we use direct query, what actually happens is that Power BI is not storing any data from that data source in the semantic model. Semantic model would be only metadata. Every time you look at a visualization, Power BI will generate a SQL code and send it to the data source. The result comes back from the data source. That is why direct query is slow, because every visualization has to send a query to the data source. So for example, I'll go and bring a field here. Let's say this is a field, it's a numeric field. I want the sum of this value. As soon as I bring it here, you see this already takes a bit time, even with a table with 400,000 records. Um, then I'll go and add a table visual as well, just to have multiple visualizations here. I'll add a table visual with, let's say all of these fields in it. And the data in this case is not the important factor, I just want to show the performance. You see this table already takes time to show me values. Um, and this is one of the things about direct query. This is a table that doesn't even have half a million record. And I'll add a slicer here for video ID, let's say, which I'm going to format this slicer to be a vertical list so that when I go and choose an item, it impacts on the other visual. So what happens here is that every time I go and select something on the slicer, this is going to um, this is going to query the data from the data source, the result comes back. Direct query is giving you the fresh data every time, but this is going to be a slow. Now I want to compare it with import mode. So I'll go and open another Power BI desktop solution, exactly the same uh, situation, exactly the same report, same data, but this time I'm going to use import. I'll go here and I say, well, let's go and use the same data source and import actually means Power BI will load that data into the semantic model. Semantic model is an in-memory tabular engine which has column store storage options. It is optimized for performance. The data loads into that column store storage and it is designed for analytics. It is much faster when you query data from a model like that. And that model is the same model that we used to have in SQL Server Analysis Services. 
which we still have it in SQL Server Analysis Services Tabular or Analysis Services Azure, which is also similar to Tabular. I'll go and choose the same table. I'll say load. This time, however, I'm going to use import, which is the default type of connection. Uh, and I said, OK. So when we click on import, what Power BI does, you see that we have a refresh process. So Power BI will get data from that data source. It creates a copy of that data into the Power BI semantic model, which is that in-memory column store, storage based on what we call as a VertiPack engine. And through that process, it also builds that column store index and all of that to make it really fast for analytics. Now that table is entirely loaded in here. When I go to the table um, tab or the data tab, I'll see the table with all the data. Then I'll go to the visual and I'm going to use the same visuals. You can actually go and copy paste visuals. I'll come to this report, my direct query report, control A, control C, copying everything, coming to here, control V, bringing all of those into here and you see how fast this is compared to the other one without uh, spending any time. I have all the three visuals loaded. Now we want to compare this. We want to really compare the values in numbers. In Power BI, we have this tab optimize and under optimize, you can actually go and see performance analyzer. This is a tool that can help you to analyze the performance. And when you enable it, it will appear as a tab on the right hand side. So when you open it, you see it here, I'm going to have it also on the other model. So I'm having it on both the direct query and the import one. The way that you can understand which one is direct query is by looking at the bottom here. You see here I have say, uh, storage mode saying direct query. So in the direct query, I'm also going to enable this performance analyzer and also in the import one, right? Now I'm going to try this and see how it works. So I'll go and say start recording. The way that performance analyzer works is that you start the recording and then you go and refresh your, um, your visuals by clicking on the slicer values and things like that. And it gives you the number. This is the number of milliseconds of how long it took for that query to run. So I'll say start recording and I'll go and do this. So by clicking on each of these, you see that um, it refreshes the data, I'll stop this, and it comes with some numbers. So these numbers is telling me, for example, it took 200 milliseconds for slicers to load, 500 milliseconds for the card visual, 500 milliseconds for the table, and that is the first load, but after that you see everything is really fast, right? The card visual takes like 100 milliseconds to load, table visuals around 200 milliseconds to load. This is import. I'm going to now direct query, start recording, and I will do the same thing. So selecting on this, you see this time, the times are much longer. And as we select on these, depending on how many values we have to query the data, this might work differently. But here you can see the difference that here we are talking about 900 milliseconds, 1000 milliseconds, which is actually a second to load the table or 600 milliseconds, 800 milliseconds, uh, depending on the volume of the data based on the item that I have selected, this changes, right? But you can see right now how much different these two are. See, in one of them, I, I have um, like timing such as 200 milliseconds and like 800, 600 milliseconds, whereas in the other one, I have timing such as 100 milliseconds and 200 milliseconds. So this is already like more than half, uh, like more than 50%, sometimes even more than four times faster when you do import. And this is just the volume of data I'm talking about right now. If I do it on a much larger data set, this would be much different. Sometimes your direct query might take, like, might take like minutes to respond, like five minutes just to show you the result. Now, here comes the challenge with the direct query that every time you do an interaction here, it is sending that query to the data source, the result comes back. This will make it slow. <clears throat> so direct query can never be performing as 
the import because import already processed your data. It is in an in-memory engine. It is column store storage designed for analytics. Whereas direct query is not like that. Direct query is a relational database system. It is never going to perform like that. There are ways you can import, uh, you can enhance the direct query solution itself. Things such as, for example, going and defining indexes in your database system, doing some database tuning. But even if you do all of those, still you are never going to be close to the performance of import. That is why we always suggest people to go and use import. So if your Power BI solution is slow um, and you are using direct query, you have to be rethinking about uh, why are you using direct query? Is there a legitimate reason for using direct query? And normally uh, there are some reasons, but uh, some of those might be related to the misconceptions and myths that people think why direct query is like that. So I have compiled a few of these in a list that I'm going to talk about. There are misconceptions and myths about direct query. People think that this is um, usually for larger file size because P P Power BI import is only for a smaller file size, which is not accurate. Some people think that this is uh, direct query, avoid the data, data duplication. So that is the reason we are going to use direct query. I'm going to talk about that. Uh, security might be another concern. There are concerns like that. I'm going to talk about each of these uh, one by one. First, data duplication. When I talk with my customers and they say, well, we use direct query because we have all of our data in our data warehouse, in our SQL Server database or whatever it is, and we do not want to duplicate that data for Power BI for the reporting. Well, do defining this as your problem or as the rule of analytics has a main issue itself because analytics is not about data duplication or it's not about uh, minimizing the volume of the data. That is not what analytics is about. Analytics is about bringing the reports and insight from your, uh, from your data th the fastest possible method. In the analytics, the performance of the report is more important than the volume of the data. That is why we go and build a star schema, we build fact tables, dimension tables, we would go and um, flatten our dimension tables, we would have data redundancy, data duplication, but that is all right because we are going to have a better performance. In analytics, performance takes the first priority. So, if I'm duplicating the data, but if I'm moving it into a platform, an engine that gives me a faster response time, then yes, then I would do that, right? So, and that is the engine of import data uh, semantic model in Power BI, that tabular column store engine. So data duplication should not be your concern. Performance of the report should be your concern. You don't want your users to go and wait five minutes for a report to load. That is one thing, right? The next thing is uh, there's a misconception that people think that import is for small tables. Like if I have a table with 1 million records, I would go and import it in Power BI, but my table is like 10 trillions of rows of data. I cannot import that in Power BI. This is not true. There is no limit in the number of rows you can import into Power BI, except the fact that what is your license on Power BI. With different licensing, you have different limitations. For example, with Power BI Pro, you have a limitation of your model size cannot be more than one gigabyte. With premium, however, with premium capacity or fabric capacity, this cap is much higher depending on the size of your capacity. For example, on F64 or P1, what we used to call it, we have 25 gigabyte memory and that can be the size of your model or on P5, which is one of the highest level of capacities, your model can be 400 gigabyte size. And 400 gigabyte size is a really large volume because when data comes into Power BI Engine, it is compressed, it is column store compressed. So this 400 gigabyte might store terabytes or even petabytes of data. So that is one thing to consider. There is no size limitation except the licensing configuration. The other thing is that 
even if you have a really huge table that you cannot import like considering the size and limitations you have that table as a direct query you can still consider things such as composite model which keeps that table as a direct query but you'll add aggregations on top of that table and those aggregations are going to be imported and you can define multiple layers of aggregations and I have explained that also in a video that how that works you can have a base table direct query multiple aggregations on top those are imported and that increase the performance significantly because most of the time your users won't hit the direct query table they would hit one of the aggregated tables so the size is not a problem it is the way that you would manage that and you would load it into Power BI. The other thing about the size and volume is that people say, well, it takes like ages for my table to be loaded into Power BI. Well, that might be because you are doing the full load each time. You can use things such as incremental load so that you can only load part of the data that has changed rather than loading the entire data. And incremental load or incremental refresh has its own configurations. Again, I have explained that in another video that would reduce the refresh time of your Power BI model. And when it is reduced, then you can refresh your data much more frequently, which is another concern of direct query um, that in direct query you have live data. You don't need to refresh it. But here, when your refresh time is really minimum, like let's say it takes only minutes to refresh, then you can refresh it every hour, every half an hour, every 10 minutes, every five minutes. In Power BI Premium, you can refresh up to 48 times a day, but you can even refresh more than that. There is also a REST API that you can refresh as many as times you want during the day. You can even refresh every minute, assuming that your refresh doesn't take longer than a minute, of course. Right. So that is another misconception. The size is not a concern here. The other concern is security. People say, well, in my data source, I have defined things such as object level security, role level security, um, column level security, or I have some data masking. I have sensitive data that I have masked it. Um, or I defined security rules and I said, this person has access to these tables or this part of data. All of those can be defined within the environment of Power BI. This can act like a normal data model. So here you would have role level security, object level security, column level security. You can define data masking is not one of the um, built-in features of Power BI, but it can be done. I have videos again explaining how something like that can be done. And the sharing itself, Power BI semantic model being part of a workspace, you can either define the way that you share that semantic model individually, or you can share it through the workspace configuration, which has its own discussion. So these are myths and misconceptions that people think that because of these, we go and use direct query. Of course, there are always scenarios, exceptions that um, regardless of all of these, you have a really a specific requirement that does require direct query. I'm not saying that no one should not be using direct query, but I would say that is probably 99.9999% of the time it can be import. Also, with introduction of Microsoft Fabric, now we have direct lake option, which if you have your data warehouse or lake house inside Microsoft Fabric, then you can use direct lake which act like direct query, but in fact, it is the performance of import, much better option. But even if you don't use that, the normal import is much faster. So if you are looking into improving the performance of your Power BI semantic model, I would strongly suggest you to first check what is the type of connection you are using. Are you using direct query connection? If that is true, I would suggest the first action would be changing that to import mode or at least to composite mode um, that would give you a lot of benefits by itself. I hope this video helped you in your Power BI implementation. If you have any questions feel, out, feel free to reach out in the comments below. My name is Reza Rad. We have weekly videos about Microsoft Fabric and Power BI. Until the next video, bye.